be about. So I didn't think you were fresh, if that's what you think. I, I felt like I felt like you just said it how it was politely. So I appreciate that. So for today, I went, let's see. Sonia, all right, you better bring it, girl. You're always cracking me up. And then Deborah is here from over the pond, and she had back surgery. And I know she's on the mend, but she sent me some of her designs today, and they were so beautiful. So I'm excited for when she can get back to reef making because she is very good at it. So we're going to be making a long spring centerpiece today, and I figure I'll talk while I do it. So we're going to start off with our foam block, and you don't always have to have these like exactly, you know, you could have a little bit of space, but for this, there's too much space. So I'm going to cut this block and I know the sound is awful. I'm going to just apologize real quick. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just line this with hot glue and secure it in. Hot glue, hot glue. Maggie, I wasn't sure if, if my um, Barbara Bush joke trick was triggering. Because <laughs> I gotta tell you, I've gone to Marshall's like twice in the past week and everything with buttons, like gold buttons, I like cannot stay away from and my husband is horrified. <laughs> he thinks like I'm either dressed like someone in the military or again like Barb all right so this is a custom order this is for a woman she has a really nice long dining room table and she loves to entertain so when we're doing this we want to make sure that we're designing it low enough so that people can have conversations without you know like either having to take this off the table or having to like look over it all right so like that I am going to, let's see, I should have done this first. I'm going to trim this a little bit. Again, sorry about the noise. I have not seen the Michael sale today. What is it? We all want to know. I will say I actually went to Hobby Lobby yesterday and did not buy anything, which has never happened. I showed restraint. I was just there to see. I got a custom request to do just like a simple white hydrangea wreath, but she wants it for her daughter's first communion. So she wants a cross that's going to go on it. And then after first communion, it'll come down and it'll just be a wreath for the house, which I love that. I think that's a great way to get a lot out of your wreath. But you know how they do every other week? It's like something is, let's put this here for now. Either it's full price or it's 40% off. Well, all the wooden things were full price. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to pick that up until it's on sale. I don't want somebody to have to pay $20. When I know it's going to be 10 soon enough. Securing this. Oh. Okay. That is really big. Um, so Maggie's saying that Michaels is having a sale and it's 25% off the sale on top of the sale price. That's really interesting. Because remember before I was talking about the hydrangeas and how cheap they were, like inexpensive, like they hadn't done a sale like that before. I don't think so. I wonder, I wonder why they're uh, having things be so inexpensive. So that means, what is what are spring at right now? They marked down to like 40%. Oh, Sonia, I'm, I'm Enchanted Vines on Instagram. I'm Enchanted Vines 
Like just, just that um, on Facebook too. So yeah, definitely send me your pictures. I love seeing it. I love seeing what everybody is doing. And it also helps me kind of get to know people better because then I know what type of work you like to do. Like, Deborah had made like the cutest Easter wreath and it just like had like very feminine ribbon on it and little bunnies and it was really, really, really beautiful. So now I know a bit more about Deborah. So yeah, if anybody wants to send me their work, I'd love to see it. Okay, so how can I be blue? I want to sell them on Michael's Marketplace. So I've never sold on Michael's Marketplace, but they're definitely promoting it, which is good. But I wonder, like, do they promote it beyond, like, when you go to michaels.com? Because I'm just thinking the people who are going there are people who are makers. So, like, I hope they're pushing it out somewhere. They used to have another, I, don't, I can't remember what it was called, like, Square. They had something where they were trying to do that. I think it's great to showcase it. I love it. Anywhere you can get your work out there is great. So, like, when we think about our target demographic, uh, when we think about our target demographic, like, you talk about this, um, there's this business coach that I, I do her, um, you know, like, her courses and stuff sometimes. So, Amy Landino, who I love. Nothing to do with Reese. It's really just about, like, you know, it, her whole thing is going after the life you want. So she helps all different types of businesses. She does coaching. She, it's a pretty big deal. She has gone around the country. She had had to interview some somebody, I think, on Obama's cabinet. Like she's done a lot of stuff at a at a young age. So she talks about having like the velvet rope. So it's like. You know, you think about the days of, of going to like a club, like who could get beyond the velvet rope? Like those are the clients that you want. So for me, if I'm thinking about who are my clients, they're usually women, not always, but usually. They are people who take pride in their home, whether it's a house, an apartment, whatever it is. They might like to host. Um, they definitely like flowers. So when you're thinking about how you're gonna find that perfect person, you want to figure out where they're going to be. So for mine, like the age demographic, I want to say starts around 40 and ends around 70. And so to me, that says Facebook. Like, so Facebook is where I do, where I like promote things to sell. I do the same thing on Instagram, but my direct site, it gives me like the stats and I get more sales from Facebook, even though there's less engagement, which is interesting. Like on Instagram, people might just comment, you know, like, oh, that's pretty, and you know, whatever. But on Facebook, they might not comment at all, but they might go to your shop and buy. <laughs> I literally just inhaled like some of this foam in the air. That's gonna be good for you. Yeah, so Harris has said before, the Michaels in Canada is really expensive, and I I wonder why. So in addition to their, like, pricing, do they not do a lot of the sales? Because that, I, I feel like, again, they're giving us, like, really good sales this year. We're off to a good start. So right now, obviously, I'm just putting down a layer of ficus. You know me. This is usually my starter and it's because it's inexpensive and you get a lot out of it. So it's gonna cover a lot of ground. I have my glue skillet. Sonia says she's afraid of glue. I don't blame you. We should all be afraid of glue, but 
if you use it carefully. So for me, I just make sure that when I dip something in the glue pot that I'm not putting it like over any part of me. Like I don't wear flip flops because it hurts. Like if this glue hits you and it's high temp or lands on you, you like it immediately blisters. So, you know, it's not a bad idea to have like a cup of water here or burn cream, all things that I don't do but should, just in case something happens. All right, oh, and, and Joy from Southern Sass is here, hello. She's just cutting greenery, making a wreath for an upcoming auction for my cousin's cancer benefit. Oh, that's so nice. So what kind of design are you, are you doing, Joy? And Maggie, I didn't darken my hair, but I did my root, my, well, like my roots got done. And my husband said the same thing. He thinks I darkened my hair. I don't know. I have like a special formula that I, like me and my stylist came up with. And like they have my hair on the website. It's like one of their styles of blowouts. Cause you know, like I'm all about the blowouts. Um, it's called the mob wife, which isn't, isn't quite me. But anyways, people ask for, people go in and they say like, I want that color hair. And I'm like, you can never give them the exact color. It's like when people have family recipes and you leave out an ingredient, I'm like, you have to promise me that you'll never give somebody my exact color because it took a while to get it right. And I'm happy with it. And I don't, I don't see it changing. Been like this for a while. All right, so now that this first layer of ficus is in, glue gun burn. You think your glue gun hurts more than the glue pan or glue pot? I think the I think the opposite, but it might just be. Are they both high temp? I mean, I feel like either way, if if I get any glue from either of them, like I'm gonna be cussing, lots and lots of cussing. Like my daughter, I don't think knew I really swore until I started making wreaths a lot because I can't not swear if I get burned. It's a lot. Yes. <laughs> So Joy might do a wreath of magnolias or hydrangeas, both awesome choices. Choices, And how wonderful is it that you have so many flowers to choose from? Hi from Newcastle. Let's see, so wonderful horseshoe. Can I ask what your name is? Because I'm trying to, I, like, George, I don't know how I can always remember his name because he's got a handle that's, you know, like, just letters and numbers, I think. But I always know when it's George. Some of these I don't know. I just want to make sure I want to address people properly. So right now I'm going in. I'm going to do a layer of Ruscus. And what I love about using Ruscus here is that you can bend it so that it trails down a bit. So if you don't love your container or you don't want the container to be, you know, really much of a focal point, then having something that trails down, I think is a nice, a nice response to that. And as I'm doing this, I'll be turning, turning it around. I'm getting much better at, at, at booting people. So anybody who saw the live on Super Bowl, there were some negative people on there. And that was the first time I've really been trolled. But can I just tell you that the things they were like typing, 
I had no idea what they were. Like they were kids. Like it was all stupid stuff, like all acronyms. But I was like, I don't know what it means, but I'm just gonna block you and then I'll Google it later. And so that's what I did. All right, so just doing a little bit of foundation here with our greens. And then I'm gonna start with some of my bigger blooms. So for this, we are going to be working with some of these peonies. And if you saw um, the video the other day, they always need to be steamed. And the wreath that I posted Ooh, you're sassy, all right, I love it. Um, <laughs> you guys are funny. What was I saying? Oh, the wreath that I posted yesterday, that like huge cottage wreath, it took me so long to steam. I think it was like five bushes of them and it took a while. That was a long process. I really wish that whoever made them just shipped them properly, but I know that's not gonna, I know it's not gonna happen, but. It's, it's work, but like I said, customers love it, and my client was very happy. She actually had sent a picture with those specifically in it, so she got exactly what she wanted. Let's see. Right. So I really meant to start with the hydrangeas, but you guys distracted me. It's not my fault. I'm not taking any responsibility. It's just too worse. I'm like, I could pay my daughter to be a moderator, but I feel like I don't, I feel like I don't want to pay her. <laughs> That's what I feel. So these are, um, they're like a really soft peach color and they have like little bits of like chartreuse like tips to them. And they're really pretty and they look very lifelike so I do have to keep in mind designing small is not my strong suit and I have to remind myself this is going on a dining room table and we don't want people to have to move this or you know have to like talk over it so I need to keep this low so I need to just have some parameters and stick to them that pop that right off so I was thinking too it would be fun to do like wreath kits I don't want to sell the wreath kits but I'm thinking like if we had wreath kits that we could do together that would be fun so I have to figure out who sells wreath kits I don't know if anybody has like a recommendation definitely let me know and I can see about reaching out but I thought that would be fun it's fun to design together and I think it's fun to have like the same materials all right so just doing our hydrangeas yes everybody loves George oh thank you Betty nice to see you yeah George was having his workshop built last week and I am waiting to find out about it and George was asking me of all people about camera setups and I'm like oh no I don't I still don't know what I'm doing but I forgot that I have a bit of an ace in the hole um, I have a girlfriend who worked for the Food Network like she did like the Bobby Flay show she did one with that the blonde lady that always made the cocktails i forget I forget her name but like she has her masters in cinematography so i was like well maybe you could help me with my little basic setup all right so as we're putting the hydrangeas in we're going to kind of think about patterns okay and you always want to keep turning your arrangement when it's smaller, I put it on a Lazy Susan because that keeps it balanced, but this thing is just, 
extremely long. This is from Michaels like years ago and I stocked up on them. I have a bad habit of doing that. I also have, I don't know if anybody remembers when Michaels was selling like the bicycle wheels. I have like five of them. So at some point I'm going to have an Etsy store where I can like de-stash, but every time I've tried to do it a couple times now and I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's closed the shop both times. So I think I need to do it more as like home decor. I don't know. Oh, all right. How did you know Wonderful Horseshoe? Oh, oh no, okay, you're asking me out loud if I've been a florist. So, um, I've been working with like artificial florals as like to sell since 2018. So yesterday was my six year anniversary. And so I always joke that like, obviously I had a terrible Valentine's day because why would I be opening an Etsy shop when, you know, most, most people are doing something fun. And yesterday my husband did make reservations for us, but it was to get our car serviced. So we spent half the day there. And then once he found out I was making that joke to people, he made a dinner reservation. So we went to dinner, food was terrible, um, <laughs> undercooked, but it was nice to be out. So I won't complain about that. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with these peach roses. This is like my last Oh, I know with the sales. I have way too much. Like it's it's ridiculous. I mean, I feel like it's stuff people could use. Like once a year, I donate items. It's usually like those one-offs of things that you like. If I don't organize things properly, at some point you end up with an overwhelming amount of just odds and ends. And so last year, I found an art camp that accepted them. Um, a year before, there was a woman who would make the you know the things for the tombstones um she would do it for free to decorate them for people that couldn't afford to have them done and i thought that was awesome so i donated to her but i have never been able to find her since and i she's who i would want to donate to because i do think about how expensive it is like when somebody passes away and you know you you want to have flowers, you want it to look beautiful, but like if you can't, if you can't afford it, then I just, I think it's, I think what she does is like such an awesome idea. Oh, hello, Brenda. Oh my gosh, was this Frazzavale Summers? Thank you, and I love your name. I think, I think you deserve, we deserve an explanation how you came up with a name Frazzavale Summers because it sounds like it sounds like a soap opera or something like that's a good name that is a good name I think we need to, we need to have an intervention with George and get him to have a regular name that we can identify him I'm assuming you can change your name but maybe you can't and he, he's got like the best business name so it would be so nice to see that pop up. All right, so we've gone in and we're evenly distributing our, our peach roses and our white hydrangeas. And then I'm gonna go in with some of these greens. Oh, and I have some some larger green hydrangeas. Let's get those in first. There should just be like a one blocking button that just says like this person's annoying or like a troll button 
it'd make it easier instead of you have to like answer questions because then they're gonna look into it. You should just be able to quickly remove somebody. And I reached out to TMI because I love doing that lemon wreath to see if maybe we could do another collaboration. So they're gonna look at their calendar, but I think that that is going to also happen. No, the kids are out of school, I think. Choose one, they're annoying. Maggie, I, sh I should make you a moderator. Or, <laughs> or you, Joy. You can be right on it. see this is starting to fill out so I'm gonna just distribute these green peonies evenly so I'll turn this around but we're gonna put two facing this way and then I'll put one facing this way Had some options so these they almost look white but they're like the palest palest pink and I think that they're gonna do they're gonna go well in here so when we're designing with a pattern we usually are starting off with the bigger pieces it just makes it so much easier so like starting off with the hydrangeas it left the gap so then you know where to start with your next flower. So like the roses and peonies are also large. So we're gonna go with these cabbage roses. Oops. And I like the foliage on these. For all my fellow foliage snobs. So I like to push these up because it's gonna help, you know, cover the base and it looks, they look lifelike. Hello, Connie. How are you? Connie would be a good moderator, too. I know she's on it. She is on it. All right, so I'm going to start on this side, just evenly distributing these cabbage roses. And I'm going to give these, let me cut that a little long. I'm gonna give these a little bend. When you think about how flowers grow in nature, they usually tilt their heads towards the sun. So I wanna replicate that with, with this. Hey, Jerry, and thank you, Connie. Appreciate it. Just going for a custom order on someone's long dining room table and we need to keep it low enough so that people can talk over it without having to take it off the table, so. I know I'm dangerously close. I should not do anything higher than where we're at. All right. Okay, turn this around. Thank you, Joy. Yeah, I'm so excited for my friend to help with the camera stuff because she was like why don't you just ask people what they want and have things popping up and graphics and I was like do you do you know me like I can't do any of that stuff I can do things on like Instagram stories but I have no idea what to do with anything else all in time I'm sure but for now I don't know how to do it but I do want people's feedback I, I appreciate it and I have it like I'm literally jotting it down in um, in a notebook, and 
you know, not everything's going to be subscription. I don't want people to think that. I want to do a very inexpensive subscription. It's like a GoFundMe for my camera, <laughs> basically. But it's not going to be expensive at all. So, um, you know, and I do, I'm part of coaching groups too. Like I am in Julie Samako's success circle. And that's fantastic. So hers is, she's got two different ones. One is a wreath maker of the month club. And I don't see a flicker, but um, anyway, she does a wreath makers of the month and then she does a success circle. So wreath makers of the month, she uses a kit and she does like a really in-depth tutorial on how to make it. And then for the success circle, yeah, I know she, she's, Julie is like the queen. And then for the success circle, she's there more for like the business side of things. And, you know, you can really pick her brain. It's a great opportunity. Like she does two, well, she does one or two Zoom calls a week, but you have two opportunities a week to like engage with her. And if you have a question, you know, she'll give you her take on it. Um, sorry, I was distracted. So yeah, she also talks a lot about mindfulness now, which I think is so refreshing. Like she just, her attitude on things is just so positive and it always inspires me. Like I always get off those calls feeling like, energized you know how there's just those people in your life that like getting to engage with them makes you feel good like julie is definitely one of those people and she puts her all into how she serves others i mean it's just she's incredible i don't know when she sleeps i mean she works at all hours of the day and night yeah so i started off watching her on youtube which is which I learned a lot because she went over things like shipping, mechanics, tools, like all those things, which is what inspired me to do my own, just to like continue to pay it forward. Um, so I always want to make sure that there's stuff available for everybody. I don't want people to think that it's going to like be closing anybody out, shutting anybody out. Right. Thanks, guys. I don't speak Spanish, but does anybody else speak Spanish with Lydia? All right. So again, I like the foliage on this, so I'm just going to shift it up. And these are Rinoculus and... I love these. These are really good quality. They also, they're from Pioneer. Pioneer also sells like a mini rinoculus bush that's also really, really pretty. And it's just got like, like a couple little blooms on each stem. So the, the mini ones are actually more expensive than the larger ones, but I think it's because of the level of, of detail. And today I remembered that you guys can see my feet. I usually forget and I'm in my slippers. <laughs> so like last minute I was like, I'm gonna put shoes on. I can do it, I can put shoes on. So I used to do craft shows. I feel like, and I'm not discouraging anybody from doing them. I feel like people are more likely to spend online and I don't know if part of it is, you know, if say you're at a fair, you don't want to lug around, you know, a 20 inch wreath, like that could be it. Or, um, I don't know. I just feel like online people pay a lot. And actually Damon did a, a great post, um, Damon from Deco Mesh, where he was at a craft show and he had this like really beautiful Valentine's Day wreath. And they were selling it for $40 and no one bought it. He put it online and it sold for, I think, like almost $200. <laughs> like, imagine that. It just, it's, that just, 
proves that people are, I think they can part with their money maybe a little easier online than in person. So I, I don't do the craft shows anymore. I stopped a few years ago. But there are also people who totally kill it at craft shows. It just, it just uh, wasn't me. <laughs> All right, how do we think this is coming? It's filling out. Filling out nicely. I love doing floral arrangements. I don't know why I don't do them more often because I feel like as soon as I start doing it, I, I remember how much fun they are. When I was 19, I worked at a florist and I loved it. I love learning like the mechanics and even though, you know, I was just, I was just a kid, the, um, the owner would let me make arrangements. After like a while, she would let me make arrangements and sell them. And I was like so excited because, you know, it was before it was like only the, the official like formal florist could do it. And then she let me do it. But I struggled with bows and she used to get so frustrated with me because I couldn't do bows to save my life. And she's like, how come you can do these things, but you can't make a bow? And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like with bows, they suddenly click. Um, I feel like it's frustrating and then all of a sudden it clicks and you're like, oh yeah, okay, this is how you do it. So. For anybody struggling with bows, you're not alone. And I think, I would, I would guess that everybody starts off a little bit frustrated by the process. So I'm just pulling this out because the hydrangea is too low. It took a, took a rose with it. Yeah, Joy, it does sound like we follow a lot of the same people. And I feel like they're... I mean, I don't know, has anybody done Wreath Makers Live? Because I did um, back in, I think it was 2021. And the amount of information like that whole core group does, like I know, I know Damon's group, like they have their regular makers, but also having Parker there, I was having like a technical issue and, you know, I was struggling with it for hours and he literally like opened up my phone and did it in like 30 seconds. I didn't know how to activate my shop. So like having an opportunity to be around other makers and have them assist you or inspire you or teach you is amazing. So that was like a three day, a three day um, event. And I want to go back again. I like saw Julie and I was like, oh my gosh, can I hug you? <laughs> and she's just so nice. So it was great. And I didn't do too much like after. Um, but like they'd get a text saying, you know, um, I have like that foam on my nose, sorry. Like they, so you would like download an app and it would kind of keep everybody at the, at Wreath Makers Live, like in touch with anything they're doing. And so like one night, I know they were, it was like eight o'clock at night and they were downstairs in the hotel. Like, I think they were tying bows with their eyes, with their, with blindfolds. But I'm like one of those people that like once my pajamas are on, like it's over. So that I was like, I wish I, I wish I'd gone, but I'm like, I just, I can't undo it. You know, can't go backwards. Yeah. So Joy is also saying, don't, don't give up on bows. It just clicks. I mean, I have watched Julie and then also Ashley from three little Greenwoods. I've watched so many tutorials without easy bow maker and it just, it just clicked like a couple months ago. And I don't know, I don't know what, well actually I do know what I was doing wrong. It was that I wasn't doing like that crisp twist when you got to the other side. So it was always just like not, um, so the, the loops weren't like really, what am I trying to say? They weren't like properly formed and then it all just kind of fell apart because I didn't have like a nice flat center because I wasn't twisting it right. So like that was, that was what I needed there.
All right, so we're going in with this eucalyptus. So again, like when we talk about greenery, sticking with the same family, this is also in the yellow green family. So when you're gonna use, you know, colors like this, like a chartreuse floral, it's not really gonna go well with something blue based. Most likely it's gonna do really well with something that has the yellow base. So, and these also have some like little tinges of, it's not really pink, but maybe like mauve. So it, it also ties things in nicely. And if anybody runs workshops, women love eucalyptus. Like they love working with it. It's just, I mean, it's just so easy and it just fills everything in. So I always bring, I always bring a little extra eucalyptus. So Joy went to a craft show a few years ago and sold one. I mean, I've gone to them and had to bring everything home, like almost everything home, and that's the worst feeling. And the first one I did, which probably was like 2018, I guess this woman, when she was walking away, told like her friend, like, those are, those are junky looking. And I didn't hear her. But then my husband told me, and I'm like, why would you tell me that? I didn't know. And now like my feelings are hurt because, you know, we're not going to be for everybody. And we all have our, our own style that we, we prefer. And that's okay. People aren't, aren't going to like everything. Just like if you think about like clothing, like there are stores that you, you have no interest in shopping and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. It's just not, it's just not your taste. I'm gonna grab one more thing of eucalyptus, maybe two. I guess we'll do one because that's all I could find. <laughs> Hello, Penny. Late, but you're here. So nice to see you. Thank you, Techno Dragons. Hey, Vanessa. Hope everyone had a good day. Hope some people had a nice Valentine's Day. Well, not some, but if you're doing anything, I hope you enjoyed it. We went to a nice restaurant and my meat was like served pretty much raw and it was lamb and I just found out today that lamb I used to never eat lamb because I don't eat veal because I don't eat baby animals but I was told that lamb is sheep not not babies but then I found out today that there are babies so I'm never going to eat it again anyways but I ordered lamb and it came out and it was brown but it was like raw so I have they offered to like cook it further so I said, yes, please. And then when they cooked it further, it came out and it was still brown. And they said it's brown because it's overcooked. And I'm like, well, how can it be brown when it's raw and brown when it's overcooked? Like, I think it was either bad or it was like overly oxidized. Like they had maybe prepped too early. I don't know, but I like, I couldn't eat it. It was just, I, I was so relieved I didn't have um, food poisoning today. That would be the gift that keeps giving. Right. This came together quickly. I think. Okay, so I always want the ends to match and I always like things to be trailing. Just like with the wreaths, I think it's a nice area to have like that extra detail in. And this is going on a wooden table and I didn't have a container that was like the same wood. I kind of think it doesn't look great if you have like two different types of wood. So I just spray painted this gold. Um, that's kind of like my go-to if things are going on wood. I, I ask them like what metallic would they like and then I spray it. Thank you, Vanessa. Beautiful. All right.
We're going to go in with some texture and then we're going to finish off. Let's see. Actually, I have a couple things. I have some Queen Anne's lace. And if you've seen me work with this before, I know I sound like a broken record, but if you want to get Queen Anne's Lace from Michael's, if you order it through the Pro Pack, it comes pristine. When you get it at the store, it's usually missing a head or and it's just like mangled. So I feel like Michael's makes the most realistic Queen Anne's Lace, so I want to get them there. So I only order them online now. Let me get the tag on. tag would detract from something looking like a natural flower. Thank you, Betty. You guys are all so nice. And I think that about other wreath makers, and I think that about people who buy wreaths, I'm like, they're just nice people. Like, you don't have angry people showing up at your wreath workshops, and you don't have angry people shopping online for wreaths, so, or angry people making wreaths. So it's a nice, it's a nice community that we have and I'm very thankful for it. Oh, the sticker just does not want to come off. Thanks for the vibe check. We're good. All right, so we're gonna add this into our centerpiece. And since this is such like a, a long, narrow piece, I think this would also do well on a kitchen island. I could totally see this for like a wedding reception, you know, with like the coordinating florals. There's a lot you could, a lot you could do with this. All right, so now I'm just going in with my Queen Anne's lace and I'm just gonna Distribute this, all about the texture. Last year I had a bride who, she hosted a, um, a centerpiece workshop at her house and her bridal party came and together we all made 30 centerpieces. So it was, not only was it fun, but it also, she put her party to work. They made the centerpieces, or we all did. And then she had them like all ready and done in October when her wedding wasn't until December. So it was like one more thing you can cross off your list, which is the nice thing about artificial florals. You know, like she used real for like her bouquet and for certain things, but for the, cer I mean, everything with the ceremony was fresh flowers and it was gorgeous. And then for the reception, she just wanted that to be simple. So she went with the artificials. So you can see we've got our Queen Anne's lace there. Okay, now I'm going to repeat that over here. I just like literally use that all up. Hold on, let me grab, let me grab another piece. I guess I used the last of it, so I'm going to have to pull some of that out. So do other people do floral arranging? Or is it, like, is it just wreaths, or do you just dabble in any, like, floral craft? So I have another fun thing. I've never done it before. Actually, no, I did do it once. Um, but we're going to be making, I'm, I guess by we, I mean me, um, letters with the florals all over them for, um, two babies nurseries. So it's going to be their initial. And then I think it's going to be tied with like a little pink satin bow. I think it's going to be so cute. So I've got that on my to-do list. 
Okay, Vanessa only reads. Maggie, are you saying that you you just do centerpieces or you do both? Just want to make sure I know. So we're going to go in with our berries. These are my favorites from Pioneer. They have a nice thick coating. It's hard to find good berries. And if I was doing something tall, I might leave these all on one stem, you know, and just, you can just bend them. But for this, we're gonna, we're gonna separate them so that we get the most bang for our buck. And for people who liked the TMI collab um, tonight, Kayla from Sweet Girl is going to be going live at 8. And I'm sure it's TikTok. It might be Facebook too. But if anybody's interested, she's going to be making an Easter wreath. And she's fun to watch. And she's got like a great accent. So I love, I love listening to her and I love watching her work. All right, so I've done the berries on the sides and in the middle. So I'm just gonna do the same thing here. Oh good, yeah, watch it on the replay. I had the camera going so I could also just have it I, I guess it doesn't matter oh because if it's on the camera it'll be full screen versus this because I know people don't like the the camera but right now I can't live stream I gotta figure that out I will be able to live stream once I get some technical help this seems to be yeah I would say I'm so bad with like spatial stuff, but I would say with the flowers, it's got to be three feet. I think easily it could be. Oh yeah, okay. So Maggie does, well, she does a lot, but she does memorial sprays, flower arrangements, and saddles. And at Wreath Makers Live, Nick, who's part of like the deco exchange like crew, he showed how to um, make a really nice saddle. And it was, I think, I don't know, if, I think it was him saying like, you could actually sell something like that to a funeral home so that if they had families that couldn't afford it, you would just kind of like rent it. You know, like maybe they rent it for $50 instead of spending, you know, $300 that they need to use in a different way. I think that's a great idea. I also think the same thing with wedding, like wedding flowers, if they're artificial, like if you want your bouquet to, if you want something cost effective for your bouquet and then you want to turn around and sell it after it's a win for you and it's a win for the next bride like because flowers are going to hold up Rhonda how are you thank you Rai Rai so cute that's a cute name Girly Pop. I love people's names. I, I want to know I want to know how you came to that name because that's cute. I don't think we ever heard back from Frazzle Zazzle. 
<laughs> so for the berries, I get them at Pioneer. They're five fifty a stem. I, I mean, it goes the price goes down with the more you buy, but I think the base price is five fifty. And they have them in this pink. They have them in a lavender that's really beautiful, and then they have one that's green and white. And the green and white aren't quite as natural looking as this, but I still like them. They have a nice pop. But like these are just these are so pretty. They're just like nice and soft. And Brenda, Julie is predicting, because Brenda says she likes to work with like red, white, and blue. Julie Samako is predicting that since this is an election year, that patriotic stuff is going to be very um, sought after this year. Like this is a, she's saying this is a really good year to do designs, the red, white, and blue, you know, because if you think about what you use on 4th of July is the same thing I use for Memorial Day and Labor Day. But if you have people who want to decorate about, you know, around the election, then that's great. And I did see, I can't remember where it was, but they actually had a um, nice two and a half inch ribbon that said vote. And they had one that was blue and one that was red. And I was like, well, that could, that could turn off, you know, a group but then they had one that was blue and red and I was like okay that's the way to I would say that's the safe way to do it so it doesn't look like we're implying a, you know a one party over another because we just want to make pretty wreaths but it could look like that so I'm going in with the Ruskus and I'm just starting to have this kind of trail down and let's see yeah, we'll use these little billy buttons. These things are super cute. I was on the fence if we're getting like too peachy, but I think I think the texture is worth it. I don't think it's I don't think it can be too peachy. So the fern that I use, Vanessa, um, just to get back to that, is I didn't pull it here, but it's from Pioneer and it's called Woodland Fern. And then I always use the ficus to start pretty much every design and I've been using a lot of ruscus lately because I like the way it has like its own flow to it and it's nice because it trails off and it's nice because it also has like varying colors which just makes it look more natural um, tonight is Kayla from Sweet Girl Design Co. And I don't know what platform, but I know that TMI sent out an email. So if you went to the TMI site, you would probably, I think you would see it. Or you could find her on TikTok. She might be on Facebook too. I, I think she might be somebody who does like multiple streams now, so you could catch her there. But. She's always, she just has like such a sweet, sweet voice and she's just really talented and it's nice to watch her work. I always love watching people work. Someone sent me a TikTok video of a woman who scrapbooks and she has like almost 80,000 followers. I was like, huh, how interesting could scrapbooking be? But then like you watch the process and it was just like so soothing. Like, it was just so beautiful to watch. Like, I, I'm not going to scrapbook, but it was so nice watching her do what she loves, and she was really good at it. Okay. So I just want to make sure I'm putting a little bit more attention on the ends. So I'm going to add a little ruscus. Because this has handles. I could have taken them off. Cause they're really not going to show they're just they're kind of more in the way but we can just cover it up with the greenery okay. and i like for these to also be popping out the top i always like when things have you know, like disruptive pieces to them. I think it makes it look more natural. In nature, things don't just grow, you know, straight up and down in neat little 
you know, categories, they're, they're messy in a good way. And so I like it to have a little bit of that messiness as well. Yeah, Maggie loves Kayla. Yep. And good for Kayla because she is pursuing her passion full time now. That was a goal. Like we had a, a bunch of us wreath makers had like a group. We just used to Zoom every once in a while and she made that transition and she looks like she's killing it. So I'm happy for her. I'm happy for her family. You get to do what you love full time. That is, that is the goal, right? Okay. So I did one end. This end needs attention. This thing is big. I'll definitely, I will definitely um, do measurements at the end. Oh, Maggie is a court interpreter. What? Are, so she does Spanish, and what are the other two languages? It doesn't sound braggy at all. It's very interesting. Hey, Bernie. This this is one of the three dogs. This is Bernadette. Probably not giving you the best view while she's stretching. And I don't know where Steve is. Steve's usually. He's usually with me. He might he might be mad at me for something. All right. There's Stevie. Oh, they're all coming. Hi, Stevie. You say hi. So Steve is our smallest and our meanest, and he literally can beat up this German Shepherd. He is a bully. When the Shepherd when the, I used to have two, but when they would walk by, he pulls fur from the, their back of their foot. It's awful. He's, he is mean. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be getting another um, shepherd this spring because I really miss my, I really miss my Jackie boy. But I don't know what I'm going to do with Steve because he cannot be sniffing at a puppy. And I've tried, I mean, I've been, I've always tried to have him not do it, but he is very, very um, possessive. Thank you, Maggie. She says it's stunning. I am liking how this came out. This would be nice at like an outdoor, you know, like when people do tea parties, I can't say that I've ever attended one, but I've seen them. But like if you did, had an outside area, this would be beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. They are cute. And last week I got an order for, it's an arrangement that's like this big. And she just ordered a second one and she's going to actually use it in her window boxes because they're covered. And I'm like, oh, you got to send a picture of that because I don't know about you, but every summer I redo my urns, you know, I've spend a few hundred dollars, I put flowers in them, and then I either over love them with water or I under love them, and it's just a lot of money every year for something that you know isn't going to last. My front door isn't covered, so I, I don't think I could do anything artificial. I did just order a couple artificial um, topiaries just to go in the urns because right now when I'm taking photographs for my listings. It just looks strange. It looks kind of sad with the urns just sitting there empty. So I just grabbed two off of Amazon today and they should be here this weekend. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank you for telling me that. Let me get this away. Good call. I think it was Gideon. Thank you. Doing 
yeah, Gideon, it will, it would make her sick. Maybe not her as much, but when Bernie, the middle size one eats it, she gets sick. So, and obviously if they ate any of that foam block, that would also make them sick. So I appreciate you. Let's see. I know I love dogs too. I had five at one time. And then we also foster for a rescue in Alabama. So sometimes we had six. So that was a little crazy. We're down to three right now and we're going to continue fostering. We love fostering. I mean, Steve is, again, not nice to other dogs. So that's always a bit of a problem. But what we usually do is we bring the dogs to like a brewery on a weekend because the breweries here in New Hampshire, they allow dogs. And I just think the people that drink beer love dogs. So we have had so many dogs get adopted so quickly just from bringing them to a brewery and having people actually get to meet them. So Penny's grandson is getting married and the theme is sunflower and navy. I think that combo is awesome. I love, love, love navy with like gold or like yellowish gold. That's going to be beautiful. We have to figure out a way to like share pictures. I don't know how to, this platform isn't going to let us, but I also know people don't want to jump off of, onto Facebook and I totally get that. I just, I wish everyone could see. I love when, I love when you guys send me stuff and I want you to keep sending it. I just, I wish like the whole group could see how talented everyone is because it's awesome. Let's see. Yeah, I agree. So Maggie's saying an overhead camera and I did buy some, I mean, I've been buying a bunch of things. So I do have something that I think is going to do that. I just keep getting overwhelmed with like, I'm missing cables and I need an external hard drive. I mean, like it's all just stuff that is way above what I'm familiar with. So I will work on that. Yeah, and the, the other thing too is it would be easier, like, if I could just read the comments, like you're saying, I think that would be so much easier than like having to stop and like look down because that's distracting too. And like, I'm sure that's not really too enjoyable for you guys to watch. So let me grab one more Ruskus and then we're just about done. Yeah, like I wish in the community section it would allow photos. Thank you, Sheila. I'm not sure why it doesn't. I don't know what the harm is in allowing photos. The other thing you guys could do is I know some people just subscribe and watch videos, but you could also on your page put your work up and then say, you know, like, hey, check this out, you know, like you know, something came out really beautiful and you want to share it or you have a question, like something doesn't seem right. Like you could also have people go to your pages. So that's one way of doing it if you were comfortable with it. And you can make things private so it's only people that you invite. So you could have a troll-free experience and share your work. Doing a few more pieces of Ruskus. Just trailing down. This is um this isn't for a wedding, but I was saying I totally think that this would work for a wedding, even like like the head table or a sweetheart table. This is for a client who has a very long dining room table. She's got a big Italian family and she loves to like host so she wants something that can stay on the table but it's not too tall so that people can't like see each other or that it has to come off the table <laughs> oh i'm sure you would have <laughs> so many. um so what i'm going to do now is 
Even though the base is pretty much covered, I don't want people to see the foam block at all. We always want to hide our mechanics. We want to keep things looking as natural as possible. So having them see a styrofoam block is not going to give that, give off that vibe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Spanish moss. I know on the wreaths I use the green preserved moss, but on this I like just the, it's, it's light and it's not really drawing any attention to anything. So I like to stretch this out. I get these in like three pound boxes from Amazon and considering how light this is, like a three pound box is a lot. So, and you always just want to really stretch it out so that you get the most out of it. And then once I have the, the moss in place, I'm going to use these floral pins. Okay. And what these do is they, you put them with the moss and then you pin them to the foam block. And I don't do a lot of these. I just do probably like three or four per side. I mean, the moss isn't really gonna, isn't likely to go anywhere really, but if you're shipping it, then you wouldn't want the moss to move. And if you're shipping it too, like whenever you're shipping, you want it packed as tightly as possible without everything being totally crushed. So when I ship an arrangement, I always wrap it in bubble tape and that way it's, it's less likely to have pieces coming off like when they open their order. All right, so. A little hard to see but so we're just putting this in and then I'm just gonna tuck it all in because I don't want it to show oh this is this is my Stanley she's uh, she's rose gold I'm gonna repeat it on this side and I got one of these like a set of these straws I think this is great I'm a I'm a super germaphobe so having them with these little lids, I think is amazing. Like I don't eat, I don't share drinks like with my husband, my daughter. I just tell them not to take it personal. I just don't like to share germs. All right. So even though this is going to go indoors, I am still going to apply the UV spray. And the reason why is I just think about, you know, when you're in a, when you're in the car, you're still supposed to have sunscreen on because even though you don't think you're really getting exposed to UV rays, you are. So it's not going to hurt it. It's just going to make this last that much longer without it. It's going to last a while, but I think you just give it some extra longevity. This isn't one of those things though, that I think you would need to apply it more than once. Like the wreaths I say, they should, it should be reapplied every year. This is, I think just, just one would be sufficient. Thank you. I don't have, well, actually I will be making another one because I made an arrangement similar to this and two people, one being this client and then someone else that messaged me earlier, they don't love the container. The container is like a very springy green and it says farm fresh and it's just not there. It's not their aesthetic. So I actually am going to be making one once she picks what her new container is going to be. And it's going to have very similar florals. So, all right guys, we made it. I will measure this and I'll get some nice, I'll get some photos in nice lighting. I know I've been like sharing the difference between how bad something looks. In poor lighting, I don't know if anybody saw like that episode of Seinfeld where his girlfriend either looked beautiful or she looked like she was really sick. Um, and it was all about the lighting. So same thing for this. But yeah, here we go. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and for chatting. I always love crafting with my friends. Uh, and I will see you guys soon. Have a great night.